throughout the year for this Enduro World Series, we've been to some fairly remote mountain sites all over the world. But this time for round six, we come here to the hustle and bustle of Whistler. And as you can see, it's already living up to the hype. Coming into this sixth round, we are all set with Jared Graves leading the top of the men's series and Damien Otto giving up chase not far behind. Also, Justin Leov and Rennie Wiltarber are also in the mix. In the women's category, it's kind of been a battle between two riders all year and Caroline Chousson and Tracy Mosley. And they are only separated by 10 points coming in here. But there's also riders like Annika Beerton, who are coming off winning her first stage last race could also throw something in the mix. So it's going to be exciting to see what happens over this weekend's racing. It's a very good stage, very natural, technical and challenging, so it will be fun. Stage two, and what a stage, it takes in crazy train up at the top, and then it comes into all this woods at the bottom, just like loads of fresh cut sections, and as you can see from how I just rode it, lots to catch you out, there's dust flying up everywhere, and there's just like this loose moss on the surface. I rode a ride don't slide and that's like rough as hell up at the top and then it takes the bottom bit, the bottom bit takes in the new stage so uh, have you had to do much to alter them or mellow them out or have you been up there with a hatchet at all? Yeah I've been doing a lot of work but like I said there's been a lot of people that have been working on this and I could start listing names but you've told me not to because we've only got to make this succinct but there has been a huge amount of people, the community have really got behind this. It's important to say that even without the racing we'd have all these trails and there'd be a all this work would be done but because of the racing it's kind of revived and it's allowed us to kind of revive these other trails as well and hopefully not impact the other trails we've got and hopefully start to make well continue to make Whistler even more like bountiful <laughs> Stage four takes in the infamous off-piste ride don't slide track here in Whistler. And it take, it's got some brilliant sections like this, looks straight out of a downhill track, roots, massive rocks everywhere. We've been watching the riders in practice and they're having trouble with it. They're having to push back up, look at sections again, especially bits like this. It is tricky and they're gonna have a serious challenge come race day. Yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be, for sure, the hardest one-day race we've had this year. Um, or we will have, I think, probably ever. It's going to be two and a half thousand metres of climbing. And the climbing's steep. It's not like it's, you know, steady recovery climbing. It's just on the rivet of your saddle, grinding your way up the hill. So, it's, uh, yeah, brutal. Brutal up and brutal down. We've come up with the Whistler Peak chairlift to the trail known as Top of the World, and it certainly lives up to that name. Just take a look at the view behind me. This is going to be stage five, the final stage of the race. And last year, it all came down to this one. So this weekend, the rider's going to be battling right up to the line, I expect.
just after 10 a.m. and we're here in the Whistler Arena. It's all set as the riders come down this slide behind me for a day of torturous joy out on the mountain for round six of the Enduro World Series. Yeah, I think the trails are great, but I think the liaison for me is ridiculous. It's way too long. I mean, I can accept five hours or yeah. six at the most but maybe eight, I'm going to suffer big time. I don't even know if I'm going to finish today. Like, I hope so, but with that heat, oh man, I carry so much stuff. I have a sandwich, five bars, uh, so much water, it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, that's why, that's why. I want to make sure, you know, I finish with a ton of energy because I still want to be the king in the party. <laughs> you know what I mean? Then uh, I need to be, I need to have that, I need to be fresh. You don't want to be slipping down a place and uh, becoming the queen, do you? I just don't want to drink one beer and fall apart and go to bed. No, no, I, I want to. I want to go through the night proud, back in Whistler, and yeah, you know, and uh, make some trouble. But, I mean, they're all fresh tracks. Like we've never, never raced these before, and yeah, it'll be good. I'm looking forward to it, and uh, we got some new trails out of it, so it should be good. I think we go off for last round at like 6:30, so it's a little 10 o'clock right now. So we got some hours on the bike ahead of us. Is over already to be honest. Got no air in my forks and I don't know what to do. Got about two inches of travel and just bottoming on every single bump so I can't even can't ride it properly at all. Stage one is done and we've got some interesting results from the start. Martin Mace has come out on top of the men's with Otto just a one and a half seconds behind him and low close behind him too. But in the women's category, it's Cecile Ravenel who was taking the win seven seconds ahead of Anne-Caroline Chousson and Tracy Mosley, another 22 back. But the big story in the men's category is favourite Jared Graves is 17 seconds off the pace on this first stage. So he's got a lot of making up to do. Jared, doesn't look like the first two stages have been going to uh, plan. What's, uh, can you fill us in on what's been happening? Yeah, I'm not sure. I, uh, I just lost a lot of air pressure in my forks in the first run and I was just bottomed out everywhere. There was no travel, no suspension, yeah. so I was just surviving to get to the bottom and then pumped it up with a CO2. Now it's too stiff and playing guess the pressure. So <laughs> um, it's just frustrating yeah. racing, trying to think about what your fork's doing and, and uh, not being comfortable in your setup and just trying to make do. So. Just and trying to yeah. yeah, and no chance to get any outside exist assistance to left to exactly four, of so. all the time to do at stage one. Yeah. Pretty tough, but what can you do? You got to keep charging on. Yeah, we've just had stage two and we're at the bottom of it, and it's local lad Jesse Melamed, the guy whose dad was in fact mayor of Whistler a while ago, and then just behind him is Florian Nikolai and Nico Lowe. And in the women's category, and Caroline Schuster has managed to step it up and take the stage two, with uh, Cecile Ravenel still on a flyer in second, and Tracy Mosley back in third.
seems like the stage is going well for you so far. Good result, just now preliminary on this one. I think you're sat in third at the moment. Oh, yeah, nice. I didn't see the result. So stage one will be nice. It was nice. And uh, stage two, big crash at the bottom. And um, this is good. Yeah. yeah. I'm waiting for the stage four. It's, it's really good. You're still looking fairly fresh. I mean, you're sweating a bit, but you're not looking too bad. No, no fresh. <laughs> um, it's been a tricky day for you so far, but it looks like you're rescuing it. Oh, I'm trying to, you know, I'm just adapting to the uh, to my bike not being 100%. So that stage went okay. Um, just uh, trying to do what I can do. It's not ideal, but um, I'm getting there. So I just got to keep keep things ticking over this next stage and and uh, make some repairs before stage five and lay it down there. Yeah, it was uh, it was really nice. I don't know, 2027 20, switchbacks was the name of the trail, something yeah. like this. Then uh, yeah, it was 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 crazy. Really slippery, dusty. I get some two small crash on it. Yeah, stage two was so far the only clean one. Uh, stage one, you know, I, I've been really nervous for this race. I didn't sleep well, and I knew like I was gonna crash on that stage, and it happened. But I feel like I got all my nervous energy out on that, which was kind of good. I did a clean run and didn't make any mistakes. So just keep going. Yeah. Winning both stages one and three puts Martin Mays into the lead of the GC. In the preliminary results, we've got Anne Caroline Schussel taking this one ahead of Ravenel, still seems to be firing on all power, and Tracy Mosley just behind it. And as we see, the last of the guys loading up with water, heading up to four. Graves has done a marvellous job to be able to rescue this and come into a second place on a sick bike before he can get any assistance after stage four. But Martin Mays racking up at the moment another win, and then Otton looking strong in third. It looks like it's been a tough day out in the office. It's been one hell of a tough day, yeah. I think um, I've certainly not managed to feel like I've ridden at all well yet. Yeah, just struggling to find my, find my pace. Maybe you just overdone the practice. Yeah. And uh, see so you've just patched up your leg a little bit. A uh, small crash on stage four? Yeah, small crash. Uh, probably my pedal open my legs like that. And I need just, just for the dust. Gnarly, like the worst thing is trying to gauge your start time. Like you're just absolutely hanging before you get to the start, and like so many things to manage. You know, you got to manage the heat, the water, the food. It's just relentless, like the whole race. Oh. Struggled up top and had some crashes and it's just yeah, it's just really hard to, to keep it all together on trails like that. It's just gnarly top to bottom. Like other places have gnarly sections. This that that run in particular was a gnarly section for eight minutes, so yeah, there was no let up. And lift now to the top so you can rest those legs a little bit, but a long final stage. You said earlier on you're gonna charge this one. Still the plan? Yeah, stage is my boy, so Give us some beans. Johan Borelli comes on strong to take the fourth stage. Francois Bailey Matra in second, Curtis Keane in third, and GC leader Martin Mays is still there in fourth. And Caroline Schunson takes her third stage win in a row. Cecile Ravenel in second, Tracy Mosley an uncharacteristic 41 seconds behind. Yeah, for sure, and it just shows, you know, pretty sure I'd uh, I'd had a pretty bad day, just didn't feel myself all day, and I knew I was going to struggle just to, to hold on to third, and to put, suddenly catch up to Anne and see her with a flat was, you know, it's racing, you, you feel bad for Anne, she definitely deserved to win today, she was by far the best rider out there, but you still have to finish the race, and I think, you know, top of the world was always going to be a, a risky one for flats, and I definitely changed tyres just for that one today, just played it safe, so... In a way, it was a gift, I think, today for, for me, but that's racing. There's been plenty of tough calls that have gone against me this year, so congrats to Cecile. I mean, that was super impressive riding. I mean, she's been getting quicker every every race, and for sure, a very deserved win, so. Congratulations, look like you've won this one. Yeah, it's the best race of the year. 
Uh, at the beginning of the season, I say, if I can win one race, I won't win Whistler. Yeah. And uh, I never imagine uh, what I, I can do that. <laughs> It's just a level racing so high here. It's World Cup racing on trail bikes, so you can't make mistakes and you just always got to keep pushing. So I'm happy to be on the box. Yes, yeah, you know, finally. Just seeing Martin Mays come across the line, leading the overall coming to this final stage, and devastation for him as he's had a mechanical and unable to see it through to the finish. Yeah, quite incredible. Uh, I, can't, I can't believe it, seriously, because my first, first stages was quite. Yeah, it was good, but not the best day in my life, I feel it, but at the start of the last stage, uh, top of the world was just just amazing. Sunset uh, and going down, a uh, fucking um, really nice landscape, everybody was there, and just the atmosphere gave me, gave me a good feeling to ride fast at the last stage, and yeah, amazing. Congratulations, got to say, you sly dog pulling that one back at the end, incredible ride. Oh, I can't believe it, you know, like, I was, you know, I'm always feeling good about that stage, but just the way the day was going with mechanicals and that, like, I, was, I just thought it was all falling apart and I had to really just talk to myself, you know, out loud going up to stage two because I almost pulled out. I mean, my, I thought my fork was, was borderline unrideable and unsafe and I was like, you know what, just... I've trained too much and it's been too much of a long hard season to just throw in the towel and and uh, and uh, you know waste a whole year, whole nine months work. I mean I laid down a perfect run and I can't believe it. <laughs> Jared Graves has come back strong at the end of the day to win the final stage as teammate Rude is close behind and it's a disaster for Martin Mays, the GC leader after stage four, as his hopes are dashed with a puncher finishing one and a half minutes back. Ravenel rounds off her best weekend yet with a healthy 22 second winning margin as a puncher also takes the women's GC leader and Caroline Chousson out of contention. Jared Graves has rescued this round taking the lead, Nico Lowen second, Curtis Keane a phenomenal ride for his best finish in third, Damien Otton keeping himself there in fourth. Cecile Ravenel takes her first ever race win ahead of Tracy Mosley who's had a bad day two minutes back and Caroline Chousson drops to third with that puncher and Annika Beerton is in fourth. His third win of the season sees Jared Graves pushing clear at the top with a 290 point lead. Only 500 points are available at the final round so Graves is looking good for the series. The top seven remain unchanged except for Lowe moving one step ahead of Wild Harbour. Despite a tough day that wasn't going her way, Tracy Mosley extends her lead to 80 points in the series while Cecile Ravenel closes up on Anne-Caroline Chousson in second. The team rankings remain unchanged with Trek Factory Racing still looking strong at the top. Rocky Mountain in second and Yeti, despite Jared's third win this season, still in third. Well, what a race we've had here today in Whistler. Incredible scenes on the mountain as the riders have been struggling all day. But finishing down here in the Whistler Arena, it's been smiles all round. Cecile Ravenel pulling out a brilliant debut win at the expense of Anne-Caroline Chousson, who suffered a puncher. Tracy Mosley coming back for a decent second place. But the men's, that is where the story is. Jared Graves pulled out the seemingly impossible to come back and win that one early on mechanical issues and then on the final stage just laying down one of the most monumental runs we are ever likely to see in enduro so that is the story from here as we have one round left and move onward to finale Ligura. <laughs>